So, Brian Morales brought a question to my attention the other day that's in the practice MCQs. And it shows rain, rain clouds, and a bunch of arrows running all over the land and in the water. And uh, th now is a perfect time to understand and talk about that question. And the question was, which cycle is being shown here? And I think the best place to talk about that is in it, okay? So this is where we're going. Let's go. We have some gully erosion. Here. Oh, God. Okay. Leave my rod and reel over there. Oh, that's way, that's really deep. Okay. So, here is a perfect opportunity that I know that gets like for real deep over there, like over my head deep. Okay. So, in that question, it shows loads of arrows running off. It shows rain coming down from the sky. It says, well, which question, which, which cycle is this, right? And so, uh, and I know this creek because I, I do some fossil hunting here. Uh, I may actually be stepping on fossils right now, as a matter of fact. But anyway, uh, let's talk about what cycles interact with the rain. It really, there's, there's interactions all across the board, but not in the way you might think. Let's talk carbon cycle. Is there carbon in the rain? And does it have anything to do with the carbon cycle? Yes, okay? Remember, because water, when water goes through our atmosphere, interacts with the atmosphere, just like that water is over there, you see all this foam, all these, these uh, bubbles and everything mixing up that I'm standing in. All right, this is air, right? So, all those air bubbles there, is atmospheric air that's being pulled under right there. That's where all these bubbles are coming from. And so, this is oxygenating the water. Yeah, that's true. But every time rain's coming down from the sky, it's mixing with the carbon dioxide in the air. So, it's forming that weak carbonic acid, okay? H2CO3, I believe. Anyway, I think I got, I'm trying to think on the fly. Anyway, that weak carbonic acid is in the rain. It's in this water that I'm holding, okay? So uh, the, the carbon cycle is happening up there, like all up there. The carbon is mixing, the carbon dioxide is mixing with the rain to form H2CO3, that carbonic acid. So there's the carbon cycle. What about the nitrogen cycle? Cars create NO2 gas nitrogen dioxide and up there it's mixing with all the water that's coming down on me right so there is nitrogen in this rainwater in the form of HNO3 nitric acid okay that's forming so so the, the raindrops themselves have nitrogen in them now what about sulfur we didn't talk much about the sulfur cycle when you burn coal then SO2 or SOXs, SO, SO2, SO3, are created in the burning process. And that mixes with water and creates H2SO4, sulfuric acid. And we don't have a whole lot of coal power plants here, so it's very difficult to talk about and show you firsthand that process. But mostly on the East Coast where there's a lot of coal-fired power plants, there is sulfur in the rain in the form of H2SO4, sulfuric acid. Now, that's carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur. Now what about phosphorus? This is where phosphorus comes in. You know that there is no gas phase to the phosphorus cycle, so it can't be in the rain. It can't be mixing with the rain in the atmosphere, up there in the clouds and everything else. It can't be mixing there. So how does the water cycle and rain have anything to do with phosphorus? And here it is, right here. Okay, as the water comes down and weathers these rocks, then it's going to start pulling out the phosphorus molecules that are in the deep subsoil. There's the surface of the soil. Phosphorus molecules leach their way down, okay? Now, how would they ever, and they stay there for like hundreds or thousands of years, so how do they ever get released? Here it is, we're looking at it, erosion, okay? The water is landing on all this loose dirt, pulling it down, and it's, going to be relocated and deposited 
somewhere down there and just from the bit of geology research I've done in this area these giant rocks that you see like this one here this one here these under the water here are old seabed ancient seabed and that's why I do a lot of my fossil hunting here because I know this is ancient seabed and uh, we may even find a fossil on camera here during this rain event so look look at the gullies the huge gullies that are starting to form this is gully erosion right now to reference a previous video on types of erosion but this is what these are holding phosphorus because i know these were part of the sea floor okay so one of the things that you learned in the phosphorus cycle is that a lot of the phosphorus ends up in deep ocean sediments and that becomes sedimentary rock and you're looking at it this is it you can even see the layers in that one. This is, this is a clay sea floor, okay? And so this is where you can see there, you can see there the layers, okay? This is holding phosphorus compounds and this is going to get weathered by the water cycle and deposit, and that's how it ends up in the water, that water, okay? And then it's gonna be deposited somewhere down there in Lake Louisville, okay? So that is where, and that's the answer to the question. Okay, that's the question that Brian Morales asked me the other day was, well, you know, which one is it? It's a phosphorus cycle, but it's not in the rain itself. It's not in the rain drops. It's not in the rain clouds. It's not forming up in the atmosphere. It's down here. Oh, geez. In the erosion events, in these rain events. Now, is that good or bad? Okay. Try not to think of things as being good or bad. Try to think of things as are, and they might be good or bad. It, it depends, okay? So, wow, look at this gully here. Huge gullies that have formed because of the rain. And huge chunks of this old ancient seabed exposed, okay? Now, this could be great. Obviously, we have a huge amount of oxygenated water coming from the falls. Every, every wave, all these little falls and everything else, create oxygenated water for the fish and organisms and insects and things and larvae and things that are in this water right now with me okay that's great now could we have a huge amount of nitrogen running off yeah from fertilizer from all these these lawns that are being fertilized all the time we could have this could be disaster this could be uh the beginning of the end for some body of water downstream we just don't know because you have to study what's in the watershed, in the drainage area, okay? Now, could there be phosphorus? Sure, we're looking at it. Look, here's the alluvium right here. Yeah, I don't know if you can see, this is very deep. And there's our shallow water right there running out of this gully is forming a tiny miniature delta. This is our alluvium deposit here. Actually, this would be a perfect place to find fossils. But anyway, um, We've probably got, we know we got a lot of phosphorus running off. Turbidity, that depends on the soil itself. I have a lot of exposed soil here, and it is making some turbidity, as you see. Look at that. It's making some turbidity, but it's not that bad. We do have some clear water. Um, so this could be a turbidity problem waiting to happen. We've got a whole lot of grass coverage up here. Uh, so a lot of the soil is being held in place. So the turbidity is probably not going to be that bad. Now, what about other chemicals? What about garbage, sewage, leachate, which is the liquid component, the liquid, the goo at the bottom of the trash can, that's called leachate. That could be leaching. All these people put their trash barrels out on Friday, okay? So the, all these people's trash barrels are full. It's a Wednesday right now. So there, there's probably leachate in this water that I'm standing in. And that could be anything from battery acid to rotten cheeseburgers. Now, could also be something like pesticides. All these people have pest service, you know, pesticide companies that come out and they spray for spiders and, and fire ants and who knows what, wasps, all that stuff. Well, those chemicals don't really break down most of the time. Sometimes they break down in sunlight, but a lot of times they're persistent. And that's what the company will tell you. They tell you, oh, well, this treatment lasts for three months. Oh, yeah? Well, when it rains, here's where it ends up. In the living world, in the ecosystem. Okay, and all the creatures and that live here, plants and animals that live here, flora and fauna, that's what that means. Flora is plants, fauna is animals. It ends up here. This is where all the pesticides are going to end up from the watershed. It's going to run down, run down slope 
through the watershed and end up here. So is this rain good? Who knows? Depends on what's in the watershed, depends on what's running off into this aquatic ecosystem right now.